solid. All right, my friends, it is June the 10th. It is Monday, a bit after the New York Open. Let's go ahead and do the market outlook and plans for the week ahead. Um, so let's go ahead and start off with the events. We actually have some pretty spicy events this week. Um, so it's not that common for this to occur, but on Wednesday we have the overlap between the CPI and the FOMC. Um, so that's definitely going to produce some volatility this week and likely gonna be a tradable event. Later in the video, I will cover how I think the price action will play out. Um, on Thursday, we have the PPI, but really don't care too much about that one. It's going to be the FOMC and CPI on Wednesday. They're going to be the big things for us this week. So let's go ahead and get into the Bitcoin macro. Um, no major changes on Bitcoin macro. So this is all just going to be rehashing what we've already been covering for the past several months now. <clears throat> the uptrend is strong. Uh, we've been compressing between 60 and 70K now for three months, give or take and um, still have the same overall higher time frame thesis, right? I think that we're gonna continue to chop people up. Eventually, we're gonna accept over 70K. I'm really not super convinced that this is gonna be the move, um, but I'll cover that on the median time frame section here in a moment. But essentially, just patiently waiting for the summertime chop stage to be over. I think that we still have a couple more months uh, of this chop on the docket. Eventually, as we get into quarter three, that's when I think that the trend will start to resume. So later Q3, especially into Q4, we expect the, um, you know, the orc meme about meets back on the menu, right? So nothing's changed on our time frame, right? Still want to be a charm respecter. I still want to acknowledge the fact that we're compressing and building value between 60 and 70K, uh, trading breakouts, trading momentum right now. Not going to go well for people, right? Um, you guys have seen this insane flip-flopping um the vibes have deteriorated on ct in a you know pretty monumental way it's pretty obvious just a quick scroll for a couple minutes and you see that everybody's fighting with one another everybody's bear posting everybody's bull posting nobody realizes that we're just going to keep you know swerving back and forth and just running over as many pedestrians uh in the time being as we can so yeah <clears throat> no major uh hard time frame updates if you're interested in gaining access to the spaghetti template and learning how to properly utilize it, you should consider joining the Paragon group. Let's go ahead and jump into the medium time frame. Okay, um, so last week, this was my plan, right? I, my plan was that we would reject 70K and 64 to 63 was the first dip buying zone. 57, 56 is the second dip buying zone. That's how I was looking at it. Um, one of the alternative scenarios I want to lay out for us is that we had this kind of steep pullback, pretty large open interest wipe, a lot of liquidations, etc. Just off one little move, Bitcoin went down like three percent. Altcoins went down twenty percent. There's a scenario where this is the next local low. Um, so how I think things are going to play out this week uh, is because with the CPI being uh, and FOMC on Wednesday, I think that um, probably going to have some some selling Monday, Tuesday, and I'm going to watch that get unwound. So that's been the script for pa the past couple of years with these events: is that you basically have um, de-risking. Um, like, you know, delta delta shedding and um, and hedging going into these events. So there should be a lot of sell pressure. Um, the caveat there that we want to throw into this is that how this has been playing out, um, right, is that basically once the event comes our way, um, the unwinding begins. However, what we've noticed over the past few months with these is that the, the unwind um, for all that negative delta comes early. So the last couple of events i've noticed that the unwind is coming hours before the event actually comes our way so like with the fomc that we had most recent um an hour or two before that all that selling started to unwind so if you didn't buy before the event took place you had no opportunity to even buy so it's pretty interesting how that's playing out um so yeah basically you know we have our little weekend composite structure right here um, I wouldn't be overly optimistic about us breaking out. I think that we'll probably bleed back down a little bit, but this structuring that we're at right now could be the lows or the local lows, basically see it get rejected, come back down, trade back into this kind of, you know, by the dip zone. And that's probably what I would be looking for. So those are the three scenarios to be looking for this week. Uh, either, you know, we already dipped and we just are looking for like a little puke. We have to dip a lot more or we have to dip a lot more. Um, off the top of my head, I really don't see play number two as being that probable. Um, I would think that the shallow dip or the medium dip are the most likely. Um, as it stands though, I'm going to be probably trying to run this shallow dip play this week, um, assuming nothing substantial changes. So 
as far as medium time frame goes, right, we're still continuing to build out this larger range between 71 and 63K. Value has shifted up recently because of this distribution up here. So that's interesting. That's been our first shift up in value we've had in probably a month or two. Um, so that's very interesting to make note of. Um, still have the same thesis that you want to be risk off on Bitcoin as long as we're not accepting over the composite high. As it stands with this medium time frame structure, though, that argument for us accepting over this is starting to get pretty decent. The whole compression argument, we're, we're clearly compressing into this area. So the longer we spend up here, the more likely we are to break through. Um, so that's something that is kind of contradictory to my overall thesis. My main thesis is that we just keep chopping this summer. But looking at how this is developing, the argument of us breaking out is getting is getting stronger just from a compression and, and value um, shifting standpoint. So um, again, not uh, not horned up, not overly you know risk on or anything, but that's something I'm uh, making a note of and potentially looking to play. I don't want to be caught flat footed and have some major momentum return to the market and just stay hedged like an idiot, right? I want to be ready to, to pivot right away. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it, right? covered structure we covered the 70k level or 71k because it has shifted up a little bit so yeah we have a general idea of what we're looking at just a quick scan on eth right uh you know eth really isn't holding up you know i, I said this for the past couple weeks now you wanted to keep a very close eye on eth btc it's just been weak guys um it's not maybe i don't know if i would necessarily categorize it as it's been weak enough to where the eth narrative is dead per se but it's definitely not, um, you know, I wanted to see sustained green on this and I'm seeing the opposite, right? I'm just seeing sustained red. So it's not a really great look on ETH. Um, so yeah, I mean, basically if this region we're trading into right now starts to fail, then it trades a lot lower. Um, so that's, you know, kind of what I would be expecting. Right now I'm thinking that ETH just ends up trading down a lot. Kind of a similar argument with Solana. Still massively bullish on Solana on the high time frame, but in the medium time frame picture, right, we like we had talked about, we were rejected from 70K. Talked about that last week. Talked about the likelihood of us trading down towards 40 or 30. And these are the kind of dip buying zones you want to be paying close attention to. That's pretty much it for the week. This is probably going to be a pretty spicy week with how Wednesday's playing out. So I definitely think that like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are going to be really good trading days. Uh, I'm not going to be super focused up today on Monday, but yeah, Tuesday, Thursday, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm going to be very active. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, good luck out there and I'll uh, talk to you guys soon.